Uh, I think probably each and every one of you must know uh, about the E-Myth. Uh, how many of you have read the E-Myth? Okay. Well, not everybody. So let's say, how many of you have not read anything I've ever written? Please raise your hands. Good. <laughs> then what in the world are you doing here? <laughs> right? Um, I'm going to share with you then what I've been doing for the past 30 years and why that's relevant to you. And then I'll get on with the subject at hand, which is what I call awakening the entrepreneur within. Uh, I had a fascinating statistic shared with me. Uh, I'm now living in San Diego County in Carlsbad. And for all these years before, I've been living in Petaluma, near Santa Rosa, where my company is. My company, E-Myth Worldwide. I founded my company in 1977, and I had a dream. And the dream was to transform small business worldwide. What I meant by that is that most small businesses suck. Most small businesses don't work. And in fact, not knowing anything about anybody in this room, most of yours don't either. Most small businesses don't work. The people who own them do, and they're doing the wrong work. They're what I've come to say, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 knocking their brains out 12 hours a day, seven days a week, to the point where they stop doing 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and simply give up. Doesn't mean they quit. They can stay in business for a long, long, long time, but they finally lose that edge that they started with at the very outset. Now, I know none of what I'm saying here is true of anybody in the room. So please understand, I'm, I'm speaking about everybody else out there, but the statistic that was stunning to me is that in 2006, a very, very good year for real estate in San Diego County, there were a bit over 28,000 transactions in San Diego County. Now, I'm sure everybody here knows this. And there are about 26,500 realtors. So do the math. That means 1.1 transaction per person in the business. I've discovered that statistic is true throughout the United States. That 1.1 transaction per professional. And yet, they stay. So I had to ask myself the question, what in the hell are they doing? Now please, I know this has nothing to do with you, but what in the world are they doing? Let's say it was three transactions per. Let's say it was six. Let's say it was 12. What in the world are all those people doing? Now understand, I come from an environment of small business. I had a dream, I wanted to transform the state of small business worldwide. I had a vision, and that was I wanted to invent the McDonald's of small business consulting. Now I know that sounds like a weird thing to say, but that's what I had in mind, because McDonald's is, whether you know it or not, the most successful small business in the world. I don't know if anybody here has ever eaten at McDonald's. Anybody here <laughs> ever done? The most, not next most, not the third most, not sort of, kind of, the most successful small business in the world. Starbucks has set its mind to becoming the most successful small business in the world, and Starbucks has done exactly what Ray Kroc did at McDonald's. What does this have to do with real estate? It has everything to do with how 28 plus thousand transactions are produced by 26 plus thousand professionals. And so Ray Kroc created the most successful small business in the world. Now McDonald's, even though it's sort of languishing in the United States, um, opened up 600 new stores in China last year. Starbucks, on the other hand, 
In 2006, the same year I'm talking about, in 2006, opened up six new stores a day in 2006. They're opening up stores so fast they're going to have to put them in Starbucks. <laughs> now what in the world is the mindset? You understand they're selling coffee and tea. You do understand that. Starbucks is a coffee shop. Was there coffee before Starbucks? Everywhere. You could buy coffee for a sixth of the cost that you buy in Starbucks. They sell coffee. It's a commodity. Real estate is a commodity. Coffee is a commodity. Hamburgers, french fries, and milkshakes are a commodity. You don't understand what a commodity is. A commodity means you, a computer today is a commodity, and on and on and on and on. Things start out as a product and turn into a commodity. It's astonishing when you think about it that the most successful companies in the world are successful at selling commodities better than anybody ever else ever did it. So when Ray Kroc started McDonald's, understand he started McDonald's selling a commodity called a hamburger, a french fry, and a milkshake. Better than anybody else had ever thought to do it before. In the hands of kids at minimum wage with a 300% annual personnel turnover. Do the math. Kids like your kids who you can't get to clean the room. <laughs> McDonald's got to produce the most successful small business in the world. That's what Ray Kroc started. Please write that down. The most successful small business in the world. But when Howard Schultz started Starbucks, when Ray Kroc started McDonald's, they didn't do what you have done. Neither of them went to work in the store. Neither of them made a hamburger, neither of them made coffee, neither of them made tea, neither, neither of them made, didn't do any of the work. They stood outside of the company to go to work on the company, not to go to work in the company. And that's what differentiates entrepreneurs from what I've come to call at E-Myth, technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. That is, you all went out on your own. How many of you are independent? Well, you all are, of course. And if you're too tired to raise your hands, that's okay. Just <laughs> nod your head, okay? <laughs> this is the harsh, harsh, harsh reality and the most exciting reality of the age we live in. This is the age of the new entrepreneur. Please write that down. This is the age of the new entrepreneur. The world is being transformed before your very eyes. The real estate industry is going to be, will be, cannot help but be transformed before your very eyes. And you're either going to be on the cusp of it or you're going to be rolled over by it. This is the harsh reality, the reality of all small business. Small businesses don't work, the people who own them do, and they're doing the wrong work. You don't have to take anything I'm saying personally, but hear this. Has anybody here read the book, The World is Flat? Okay, now, everybody who didn't raise your hand, write this down. The world is flat. Mr. Friedman, buy the book. E-Myth Revisited. How many have not read the E-Myth Revisited? Write this down. Buy the book. The E-Myth, E hyphen M Y T H, Revisited. Buy the book. Why? Because today is the first day of the rest of your life. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. And you're going to either not choose or choose, and both are a choice. You're either going to not choose or choose, and both are a choice. And effectively, the world is moving so quickly 
away from where you sit, that unless you come face to face with the reality of it, you'll be looking back and saying, what happened? How come nobody told me? I'm here to tell you, I'm the messenger. But I've been telling people for 30 years. I had a dream to transform small business worldwide. There's absolutely no reason, no reason for anybody to struggle as people struggle to produce results beyond belief, as people struggle to do. There's no reason whatsoever, provided you know the truth. This is not Michael Gerber's truth. This is the truth of Starbucks. This is the truth of Walmart. Think about the brilliance of the man who started Walmart, and you could say, what does this have to do with real estate? It has everything to do with real estate. Stan started Walmart, created a big, big store where there weren't enough customers, but there also wasn't any competition. Sam started the first Walmart selling the same thing you could buy anywhere, everywhere, at the lowest possible price. And then he began to replicate that model around the world to the point where today, Walmart is the largest business in the world. Please write that down. Walmart is the largest company in the world. Not the largest retail company in the world, the largest company in the world, selling commodities at low price, better than anybody in the business does. Why? Because it was founded by an entrepreneur, not by a technician suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. I'll describe what I mean by that in a moment. The future of the world depends upon the new entrepreneur. The future of the world is being invented as we speak by the new entrepreneur. Every single human being on the face of this earth has an entrepreneur within them. The problem is they don't know that one in them, and so they don't flourish because of that one in them. I'm here to tell you about a revolution that's going on everywhere you look. The problem is because you don't have eyes to see, you don't have ears to hear, you don't have feelings to feel, you're missing the entire point. And I say that to you in the dearest, most honest, most loving possible way I can. I'm the messenger. I didn't invent this. It's being invented everywhere you look. Ray Kroc was a peddler of multi-mixer molded milk machines. When he walked into McDonald's in San Bernardino, Ray Kroc was a peddler of molded milk machines. The only difference between Ray Kroc and every other peddler of anything is Ray Kroc had a substantial entrepreneurial passion. And when he walked into McDonald's, he saw something he'd never seen before. And he was so moved by what he saw, he convinced the McDonald brothers to give him the franchise rights, to give him the franchise rights to McDonald's, and they did. They didn't need the franchise rights to McDonald's. They knew they didn't because they couldn't franchise McDonald's because they already tried and failed. Please write this down, experience is the worst teacher in the world. Everybody in this room has experience in real estate. I will guarantee you've been in real estate for a long, long, long time, and you could tell me everything that's true about real estate, and I'm saying that's your greatest single problem. Ray Kroc saw the genius of McDonald's acquired the franchise rights to McDonald's, went back to Des Plaines, Illinois, borrowed the money to start his first store, what he called my franchise prototype, to go to work on the store to build the most successful small business in the world so he could franchise it. To whom? The franchisee. Why? because it was the most successful small business in the world. 
Please write this question down. I'm going to call what you do your business, even though it's not accurately true. Is my business the most successful small business in the world? Could I franchise it? I'll say in advance the answer is no. And I say that in advance to everybody I ever speak to, because the answer is no. Because in fact, your business depends upon you going to work every day. How many of you know that to be true? Your business depends upon you going to work every day. If you don't go to work every day, you're out of business. Which means you don't own a business, you got a job. And you're working for a lunatic. And all the coaching under the sun and all the training under the sun, all it's going to do is get you better at your job. Called doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 busy. I'm not here to do that for you. I'm here to completely change your mind. The problem is that's scary. Because you're already bought into the job. And I'm essentially saying that's scary because nobody wants to think the job is coming to an end. Hear me, 28,000 plus transactions, 26,000 plus people, 1.1 transactions a year. The job came to an end years ago. Nobody simply woke up. They thought if they got better, smarter, different, et cetera, and so forth, they could do the job better, smarter, different. And they'll get a little trick here, and they'll get a little trick there, and they'll learn how to do listings, and they'll learn how to do closings, and they'll learn how to do this, and they'll learn how to do that. And so they keep on doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, and the numbers don't change. Oh, they change for someone. Somebody told me that 80-20 rule isn't true. It's called the 95-5 rule. 95% of the results are being produced by 5% of the people. Where is everybody else? And I'm suggesting exactly where you need to be, because that's what you created. So here we are. So now what? Well, now what is what I call the dreaming room. Please write that down, the dreaming room. Now what is very simply the greatest single opportunity any human being has on this earth of ours? Now what is to begin to dream in earnest? Now what is to go to work on your life, not in your life, to discover what it means to create a life through the creation of something unique? You get to do that. Every single human being on the face of this earth gets to do that. And what I say is this is beyond e-myth. Now, when I invented e-myth worldwide to transform small business worldwide by bringing Ray Kroc's message to every small business owner who's doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, making hamburgers, making french fries, making milkshakes, selling real estate, doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that, I brought that message with over 60,000 clients in 145 countries, showing people that going to work in your business is insufficient. What is absolutely essential is to learn how to go to work on your business, to build a business that works, instead of working yourself. To build a business that works absolutely predictably every single time in the hands of a minimum wage kid. Now, I say that to you, and I'm saying that in real estate, I'm saying that in financial planning, I'm saying that in law, I'm saying that in accounting, I'm saying that in the most sophisticated businesses and industries in the world, and people look at me like I'm nuts. You can't get a kid to do what I do. Do you realize how much I've had to learn to do what I do? Do you realize how sophisticated this is? Do you realize how complicated this is? Talk about McDonald's. Do you, there's, we're not making hamburgers. You can't do that here. Our business is unique, everybody has said to me, as I go out and make waves wherever I go. And then somebody listens. A cardiologist listens. And he says, oh my God, he's right. 
If I can't do this tomorrow morning, I'm out of business. Oh my God, he's right. There's got to be a better way to do this because the way I'm doing it doesn't seem to work. And suddenly a financial advisor hears it and he says, oh my God, he's right. If I don't meet with my client, if I don't do it, who will? Nobody can do what I do. Has anybody come face to face with the realization that you've actually built the strength of what you do based upon your own personal skill, your own personal willingness to do whatever it takes, your own personal pursuit of the impossible on behalf of your client? What do you sell to your client? You sell you, don't you? You're certainly not in selling them. You sell you, and that's what you've been trained to do. Because this is personal services. You're a professional. Oh, God, what a mistake. <laughs> Understand, I don't mean you shouldn't sell you. Continue. But then you've got the worst job in the world because you're working for a lunatic. And you don't understand she, he, that one you are, the technician suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure, the technician who went out, and went out on your own to learn how to develop the skills needed, to go out and make the calls, to go out and make the listings, to go out and make the clothes, to go out and make, show a house, do a this, do a that. Does anybody do any of this stuff? Completely off point and completely on point. Because if you look at the status quo, that's what you're supposed to do. And if anybody's very, very successful, they'll point to themselves and say, it's because of me. Nobody has my ability to connect with the customer. Nobody cares as much as I do. Nobody works as hard as I do. Nobody works as smart as I do. Nobody knows the industry as much as I do. Nobody knows the market as much as I do. And I, have you ever heard this before? So then what? You're asking the wrong question and coming up with the wrong answer. And I swear to God, it's as easy to do as everybody here knows it to be true. If I were standing in front of 26,000 plus real estate professionals in San Diego County, they'd listen to me and think I'm a lunatic. They'd listen to me and they'd think I'm a lunatic. They'd say, Michael, what do you know about real estate? Have you ever done what I do? Do you know the business like I do? Just like the cardiologist, what do you know about cardiology? What do you know about accounting? What do you know about financial planning? What do you know about semiconductor industry? What do you know about this? What do you know about that? And I say nothing. What a blessing. Because <laughs> the truth is I know something that you need to know. And that is that every single business is absolutely the same. Everybody's got to market, everybody's got to manage, everybody's got to do money, everybody's got to do lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment, everybody's got to make a living, everybody's got to make it work. In fact, if I was saying this to a guy who works in a hamburger stand and he's making burgers and he's making burgers and he doesn't have time to talk, I'd say, so what's the difference between you and Ray Kroc? Ray Kroc started his company at age 52. He started at age 52. He ended up 30 years later a multi, multi, multi billionaire. Mrs. Kroc is still spending his money. <laughs> what did he know? He knows what you need to know. Please write it down. Go to work on it, not in it. Go to work on it, not in it. Go to work on it, not in it. To do what? To build a system that works. To build a system that works. Which becomes what I call, what you call, what you need to understand is the most important thing you can produce. It's called IP. Please write that down, IP. Do you know what IP is? It's intellectual property. Please write this question down. What's my intellectual property? I know what mine is. Mine is e-myth. Mine is working even as we speak in the hands of coaches who do the work 
with over 60,000 EMITH clients in 145 countries. I haven't coached a client since 1979. It does. What's it? The system through which we produce these stunning results. Through whom? Through coaches who have no business experience whatsoever when they join us. To whom? To clients in every industry, high tech, low tech, no tech. Any kind of business, anywhere in the world without any knowledge of any of those businesses, without any knowledge of what they do, what they don't do, who they do it for, et cetera, and so forth. You see, my God, that's all I need is a coach who doesn't know anything about my business. Yes, it is. Provided that coach has a system, a system for helping you understand the truth about what you're there to do, to help you to understand what your dream is, what your vision is, what your purpose is, what your mission is, because if you don't connect with that, you'll continue doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 no matter what you do. And instead you can be free. If you knew what Ray Kroc knew, if you know what Howard Schultz knows. If you know what Michael Dell knows at Dell Computer, please write it down, Dell Computer. Customized, standardized. Customized, standardized, customized, standardized. The turnkey methodology through which he invented the largest computer company of its kind in the world. After IBM, after Apple. You can't do that, and then he did. Has anybody been to Starbucks? Anybody here? Do you understand what an entrepreneurial company looks like as compared to a coffee shop? Do you understand when you walk into Starbucks, you ask for a cup of coffee, they ask you what size of cup of coffee? You want a small cup of coffee? You want a medium-sized cup of coffee? You want a big cup of coffee? You can't buy that at Starbucks. Instead of small, it's tall. Instead of medium, it's grande. Instead of humongous, it's vente. What the hell is that? <laughs> what do you call what you do? Please write that down. What do I call what I do? What do I call what we do? What are the words we use to brand my company, to differentiate my company from every other company in the world? Every single one of you are selling the same damn thing. You, you know that. I mean, if you're commercial, you're commercial. If you're residential, you're residential. If you're Mission Viejo, you're Mission Viejo. If you're San Diego, you're San Diego. But every single one of you are looking for the same thing in a certain level of the market, depending upon what you perceive yourself to specialize in. Upscale homes, downscale homes, middle scale homes, professional cu customers. Upscale customers, downscale customers, whatever the hell kind of customer you can get kind of customer. <laughs> customer who can afford it, customer who can't. That was a good idea. <laughs> who thought of that one? <laughs> they just fired two guys, two CEOs. The largest financial services firms of their kind in the world. They just canned them. Why? That was a good idea. Let's say we just lost 11 billion and we don't even know the truth yet. Who thought of that one? And here we are doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, and then it hits the fan. Now what? Well, here's now what. Please write this down. Here is now what? It's the greatest single thing that could possibly happen to every single person in the room. Wake up. You either own your future or somebody else does. Please write that down. You either own your future or somebody else does. This is the first day of your life. You get to make a choice. You get to awaken the entrepreneur within, which is my eighth book coming out in February. It talks about the revolution. It talks about the age of the new entrepreneur. The new entrepreneur is different than the old entrepreneur. 
The new entrepreneur is focused on one word and one most important word, and it's called meaning. The big question the new entrepreneur is going to answer is what is the meaning of your business? What is the meaning of your company? What's the point? You know, we get to a certain age, I imagine we're about the same age. I'm 71, you're 75. 75. We're about the same age. You know, you're doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. And what we pretty well figure out is the string is running out. I mean, you know that. I know that. You know, I can stand up here and big shot talk and so, but the string is running out. I mean, it's coming to an end. Well, that's true of everybody in the room. You don't have to be 75. Please stand up. Here we go. <laughs> You don't have to be 75 here, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to be 75, you can be 71, you can be 62, you can be 54, you can be 48. My dad died at 49. <clears throat> but it's coming to an end. It's called now, now, now. It's over. That's what it is. It's called COD. It's your crap out date. So essentially, it's coming to an end. I mean, I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know if it's six years from now, eight years from now, 22 years from now, 12 years from now, four years from now. But there's only one question that's relevant to anybody in this room. When it happens, what will I have done with the time I was given on this earth? And I'm saying we're all asleep. I'm saying you can do whatever you want to do, you can say whatever you want to say, but ultimately, what's the meaning of my life? What's the meaning of my life? What's the meaning of my life? And this is the big question in the age of the new entrepreneur. The entrepreneur is going to reinvent the world. If you look at every single thing that's happened in my lifetime at 36, and 1936, and you in 1930, 19, see, I can't even do the math, 1932. You understand everything that's occurred since this gentleman was born? Everything that's occurred in this world since this gentleman was born? Do you understand there were no jet planes when he was born? There was no microwave when he was born. There was no television when he was born. There were no cars the way we think of cars when he was born. There were no refrigerators when he was born. There were no, you understand, there was nothing. <laughs> When he was born. <laughs> Nothing. And entrepreneurs invented all that's occurred since he was born. Entrepreneurs didn't invent World War II. Entrepreneurs didn't invent the Korean War. Entrepreneurs didn't invent the Vietnamese War. Entrepreneurs didn't invent and on and on and on and on. Entrepreneurs didn't do that. The fact of the matter is, without entrepreneurs, we wouldn't have been able to fight those wars, let alone win them. Entrepreneurs invent the world. You get to invent the world. You do, you do, you do. Everybody in this room, you get to invent the world, but first of all, you gotta wake up. And that's what happens in the dreaming room, and that's what my dream is for the rest of my life, to awaken the entrepreneur in the world transform the world through inventors who can imagine a world that's different than the world we see today, that can in fact take complete accountability for the rest of your life, to invent a product, a company, a capability that nobody ever imagined would have existed before you came along and did it. It's a gentleman who's created the most extraordinary thing. His name is Muhammad Yunus. How many of you heard of Muhammad Yunus? See, now hear me, this is really important. I want you to see this, please raise your hand. Gentlemen in the back, please stand up. Right, I just asked you about how many of you know, have heard of Muhammad Yunus. Muhammad Yunus was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize two years ago for an entrepreneurial invention called micro-lending and a bank called Grameen Bank. Muhammad Yunus was a professor of economics 
He walked out of the university one day to discover people lying in the streets. And they're dying from famine. And more people and more people and more people and more people dying of famine, dying in the streets in the city in which he was teaching economics. And he walked out and he said the conflict between what he was teaching and what he saw he said something's missing in this picture. And he impulsively reached into his pocket and handed one woman on the street $17. Not American dollars, his dollars. To give her access to the capital she needed to become self-sufficient. That was the first step in the creation of Grameen Bank. And a completely original model of creating capital for impoverished women. Since the time he handed that woman $17, he's invented a system, just as surely as Ray Kroc invented a system. And millions upon millions upon millions of impoverished women throughout the world have been liberated from poverty because of his system, because of his invention. Think about it. Just came into his mind, saw a problem and fixed it, saw a problem and fixed it, saw a problem and fixed it. There's not a soul in this room who can't do that. Even if you took the real estate industry, saw a problem and fixed it, saw a problem and fixed it. How? Dream big, think small, act even smaller. I'm suggesting that every single solitary soul in this room can reinvent the industry. Only when you begin to dream about it. Only when you begin to see that when you go to work on it, you're going to work to invent a system through which the company you invent works, just like Starbucks, just like Walmart, just like McDonald's, just like Dell Computer, just like Federal Express, and in each and every single case, everybody told those people, you can't do that, 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 you can't do that. That never could work, that never could work, and they said that to Walt Disney too. And then he invented Disneyland. And they've said that to every entrepreneur under the sun, and then they invented something else, and so can you. And that's my message to you here. I'm saying you're in face of the most exciting opportunity you can possibly imagine. The world is being transformed everywhere you look. The question is, are you going to be consumed by doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 busy? In which case there's no energy, no time, no imagination, no passion for transforming how it's done, are you going to stop and look? So I'm here to invite you to stop and look. I'm here to invite every single person in this room to come to the Dreaming Room. I held my first Dreaming Room in December of 2005. There are 35 people in that room, and I invited them to get unstuck. And they came to that room not knowing what was going to happen because I didn't know what was going to happen. I said, it's a blank piece of paper in beginner's mind. Please write that down. A blank piece of paper in beginner's mind. Take everything you've ever done and trash it. Forget it. Put it in the wastebasket. Forget about it. It can't help you get where you wish to go. It can only keep you doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. Trying to find a better way to do it. This is not about fixing old co. This is about inventing new co. And new co is the rest of your life even at age 75. New coat is the rest of your life. And in that first dreaming room, and I've done 27 cents, I've been engaging people in this impossible question. What's my dream? What's my vision? What's my purpose? What's my mission? What am I challenged by? What do I care about? What do I really, really, really want to do. And beginning that conversation with yourself to discover that there's a way to do 
everything on the face of this earth. And if there's a way to do everything on the face of this earth, there's a better way to do everything on the face of this earth. And if there's a better way to do everything on the face of this earth, there's a best way to do everything on the face of this earth. And the only one who knows what that is, is God. But that doesn't stop me for trying to figure it out. And that's where the energy comes for creating great companies. And great companies start small. So how many of you have a garage? Please raise your hands. I know it's a silly question. Raise your hands. How many have a garage? Okay, do you have a garage there? Good, raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> Play the game, okay? I mean, you know, I'm 71 years old. Little respect. <laughs> okay. How many have a car in the garage? Get the car out. Apple was started in a garage. Microsoft was started in a garage. Dell Computer was started in a garage. Mrs. Fields Cookies was started in a garage. Anita Roddick's Body Shop was started in a garage. All great companies start very, 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 very small without capital. How many don't have any capital? Please raise your hands. Great, you're perfectly primed. You got a garage, you got a garage and you don't have a pot to piss in. Think about it. You got everything you need, plus the imagination necessary to pursue the question. And the question is, what do I want to invent? To which I can devote the rest of my life with meaning. And the extraordinary thing is, you don't know the answer to that question. And the only question I have for you, are you interested in discovering what it is? And if the answer to that question is yes, then all I want you to do is to leave your business card at the back of the room with Mark Ehrlich and his little basket. Mark, would you please come closer? Here's Mark's little basket. Mark's little basket, we actually didn't bring that with us, that's how unimaginative we are. Um, and all you need to do is put your business card in that little basket, and then we'll contact you to tell you when the next dreaming room is. But let me tell you right now, there's one coming up, December 7th, 8th, and 9th, but it's in Vancouver. So you'd have to come to Vancouver. Canada, yes. Um, Vancouver, two and a half days with me, just pissing you off and waking you up. What happens in the dreaming room? People wake up. What happens in the dreaming room? People get unstuck. What happens in the dreaming room? You begin to discover things you never knew existed before in you and in your imagination. The only question is, are you up for it? But that's a question you gotta ask. So, we'll get back to you. All you need to do is give us a business card. I want to say thank you for the time. Thank you for the attention. Thank you for inviting me, and I hope to see you all again. Bye-bye. <laughs>